AP Biology, Mendel and Genetics, Part 2. In this lesson, you're going to be using the math method to predict the genotypes and phenotypes in a dihybrid cross. You're also going to be using the chi-square test to find out if the results of a genetics experiment are valid. The math method of solving genetics problems is easier and faster than the pundit square, but it does have some rules involved. The first uh, rule is that you have to find the genotypes or phenotypes, depending on what you're looking for, ratios for the first trait and you analyze that trait separate uh, from the second trait. The next step is to analyze the genotype phenotype ratios for the second trait. Then you multiply those ratios together to find out the probability of producing the offspring with the traits you're looking for in the problem. At this time we're going to move to our notes. Here we have a practice problem, big Y, little y, big T, little t, cross with big Y, little y, little t, little t. First thing we want to do is write down our alleles. Big Y is yellow peas, little y is green peas. Make sure that little y is small. Big T is tall, little t is short. We're trying to figure out what ratio of the offspring, what's the predicted possibility of producing offspring that are heterozygote for two traits, big Y, little y, big T, little t. And we're going to try to figure out how many of the offspring are predicted to be yellow and tall. So the first step here is to analyze the traits separate from each other. And you, you can see here we're doing some simple pundit squares. Just looking at the Ys, just looking at the yellow and green, green peas, we can uh, look at the first parent and we see big Y, little y that goes on the side of our pundit square. And we're crossing it with big Y, little y. And this is a fairly easy pundit square. Big Y, little y, cross with big Y, little y. Gives you uh, one out of four, big Y, big Y. Two out of four, big Y, little y and one out of four little y little y. Now we're not interested in all these genotypes. We're only interested in big y little y in the offspring. So the possibility of producing big y little y in the offspring in these uh, parents is two out of four or fifty percent. Write down the decim or the um, fraction on the side of the genotype that you're looking for. We also want to find out how many are going to be yellow. And remember there's more than one way to make a yellow uh, plant or a seed here. Yellow seeds can be produced by the heterozygotes, big Y, little y, or the homozygous dominants, big Y, big Y. And as you can see, we've got one, two, three out of four that are going to be yellow, so three-fourths is written down next to it. So now that we've analyzed the first trait, we're going to analyze the second trait. We have big T, little t, crossed with little t, little t, so we'll make a little pundit square with this. And as we can find out, we're looking for big T, little t, and that's 50%. Uh, that's going to be big T, little t. And tall will also be 50% as well, and we'll write that down. The next step is to multiply them together, and that's fairly straightforward. Here we have the big Y little y multiplied with big Y um, big T little t half times a half equal to fourth, or about 25% of the offspring are expected to have this genotype of big Y little y big T little t heterozygote for two traits. As far as yellow and tall, we have three fourths times one half. That gives us a total of 3 eighths, or 37.5%, that are estimated to be yellow and tall. Now this is a fairly straightforward and easy genetics problem, so we're going to get a little more difficult, uh, complicated here in a minute. But you do need to walk before you can run, so make sure you can do this. After you learn this method, you won't have to do 16 square pundit squares. And this can be used for even three traits. If we had big Y, little y, big T, little t, and say big R, little r, crossed with something similar, you can just multiply instead two things together, three things together to figure out the uh, expected offspring. Uh, if you had to make a Punnett square, that would be a 64 square Punnett square for three traits, which would be uh, a very long time to do. All right, now we're going to be doing a more realistic problem. Let's see if you can solve this problem using the math method. Go ahead and pause at this time. Try to solve this problem using the math method, and then we'll check your answer. I'll read this out loud. A farmer crosses a purple tall, and I underline these words. If you're doing a, a problem in a test, if you're allowed to write on the test, then underline key phrases. Purple tall crossed with a white tall pea plant. The F1 seeds had the following phenotypes. 152 purple tall, 46 purple short. Hmm. Purple is dominant to white, tall is dominant to short. What were the parents' genotype? So, first thing we're going to do here, uh, and if you want to try to answer this question, go ahead and stop at this time and kind of think about it. All right, to answer this problem, 
you need to do a few things. The first thing is write down your alleles. Always write down your alleles. Make sure you know what you're looking for, what the P's and the T's and all that other good stuff means. Now, usually it's embedded with a story problem, so that means you it's easier to kind of uh, think about this stuff when you have it written down in a more clear way. Second step is write down the parent's possible genotypes. Now, if you're a purple tall parent, that's parent number one, there's two ways to make purple. That's either big P, little P, or big P, big P. And that's listed right over here. We don't know which one is it is yet. The second uh, trait for the parent is tall. And there's two ways to make that as well. Big T, big T, big T, little T. For the second parent, we have a white tall parent. And um, there's only one way to make white flowers in these plants, which is little P, little P. So that one's a given. However, tall, again, we have two possible ways. Big T, big T, or big T, little T. At this time, let's stop and see if you can answer this problem. Think about what you would look for, analyzing the traits separately. All right, moving on. The next thing we're going to do is to analyze the offspring. Now, as you can see, we have 152 purple tall and 46 purple short. So what I'm seeing is we have a total of all of them being purple. If you notice, 152 purple, 46 purple. So for the first trade and the first trade only, we have 100% that are purple. That's important. We also see that we have about 3 fourths tall and 1 fourth short. Now that's not an exact ratio. These are ran, you know, chances of producing offspring from the parents depending on their genotypes. So you have to be able to look at this stuff and notice like a 50-50 or um, one-fourth and three-fourths kind of a ratio, but beyond that, that's pretty much all you have to do. Recognize 50-50 and three-fourths, one-fourth, or 100% if that's the case. All right, so we have about three-fourths of the uh, plants being uh, tall and one-fourth being short, and that's something I would write down. So the next step is to find, do Punnett squares to find out what the parents' genotypes that will fit this data. So how do you get all purple from this cross for the first trade. Parent 1 is big P, little p, or big P, big P. Parent 2 is little p, little p. Which one of these two gives you all purple? Now you can almost just look at this and figure it out, but we're going to do the Punnett squares just to make sure you know the skills. Also, how do we get 3 fourths tall, 1 fourth short from these genotypes? Will big T, big T cross with big T, big T give us 3 fourths tall and 1 fourth short? Think about what the second trait has to be the second alleles have to be in order to produce three-fourths tall and one-fourth short. You're well on your way to solving this problem. All right, moving on. So, how to get all purple? How do we get that first trait? If it's big P, little p, cross with little p, little p, we can do the Punnett square on this, and we come out with one-half white, one-half purple. If the parent, parent, the first parent, is big P, big P, then if you cross it with the little p, little p of the second parent that has white flowers, we get all big p, little p, or 100% purple. What fits the data? Well, all the offspring were purple, so parent number one has to be big p, big p for the first trait. We're almost fit, uh, there as far as figuring out what the parent's genotypes are. So how do we get three-fourths tall and one-fourth short? Well, we got a couple of possibilities here. Big T, little t, cross with big T, little t. We have big T, big T, cross with big T, big T. Big T, little t, cross with big T, big T. We don't know which one of these it is. How are we going to get three-fourths tall? Well, just uh, eliminating some things here. Big T, big T, cross with big T, big T gives us all big T, big T, and that doesn't give us any short at all. Over here, we have big T, little t, cross with big T, big T, and that also gives us all tall. That's not going to work. However, if parent number one's second um, homologous chromosomes have big T, little t, and parent number two also has for the second trait big T little t, and you cross that together, you get three fourths tall and one fourth short. This looks like it's going to be the correct uh, genotype for the second trait of both parents. So we've answered our problems. Parent number one is big P, big P, big T little t. Remember the second trait was big T little t, first trait had to be big P, big P. And parent number two is little P, little P, big T little t. And that's how you answer this question. Make sure that you're able to do this, and if you have questions, make sure you ask in class. All right, moving on. The chi-square test.
The chi-square test in genetics is used to determine if the results of, of a genetics experiment, in this case, it's used for other things too, but we're applying it to genetics, are due to chance or due to the parents' expected genotype. So let's do an example, and this will make more sense. Let's say we have, uh, these are our alleles. We're going to use these over and over again. Big P is purple flowers. Little P will be white flowers. Big T tall, little T short. And we're crossing a purple flower plant with a white flower plant. And in the F1 generation, the children, we're going to have 32 purple plants and 28 white flowers. So how can we figure out, A, what the parents' genotypes are, and B, if this data here, which is not exactly 50-50, actually is close enough to be considered valid if we um, think we figure out the parents' genotype. So what is the parents' genotype? Well, for white flowers, there's only one way to get that. That's little p, little p. What does the purple flower have to be in order to produce 50% purple and 50% white flowers? Is this going to be big P? Big P is a purple genotype, or the genotype for the purple phenotype, or is it big P, little p? Let's do our Punnett square. So these are the kind of questions you have to be able to answer. What do you think the parents are? And does the chi-square test support your conclusion? So big P, little p is probably predicted for parent one, because if you do this cross, big P, little p cross with little p, little p gives us half, half white flowers and half purple flowers. And uh, if we have a total, you have to count up all the, the children that are being made, the offspring being made. So we have a total of 32 plus 28, that equals 60. If we have a parent that's big P, little p, cross with little p, little p, we would expect 50% be purple, 50% be white. So out of 60 F1 offspring, the predicted ratio of uh, purple to white would be, or the predicted number of purple to white, would be 30 purple and 30 white. And that's going to be useful for the next part, which is our chi-square test. Are these results, 32, 28, close enough to 30, 30, in order to be considered valid? All right, here we have the chi-square test. Now, I'm going to put the, um, the book version on the visualizer, and then this is what the table looks like. These are the number of categories. Uh, for our example, in our um, on our notes, we're just using two categories, but eventually we're going to have four for a different uh, example. Here we have observed, expected, observed ratio or observed number with different phenotypes, expected number with different uh, phenotypes, observed number minus expected, then we square it, and then we divide by expected. Once we have that information, we add them all up, and this little symbol here means chi-square. This will be a chi-square value that we're going to compare to a table to find out if our results are due to chance or if they're due to what we think the parent's genotype is, which is big P, little p. So this is how we do this uh, kind of problem. Over here, we have um, two categories. So we have either purple or white flowers being made. Observed number was 32 purple and 28 white. The expected, as we figured out using a Punnett square and um, you know, dividing 60 in half, 50-50, we expect 30 purple and 30 white. Observed minus expected is 2 for the first category, purple. 28 minus 30 is minus 2. So I'm just kind of cranking out these numbers here. Pretty easy so far. Then we're going to square this number here. Observed minus expected square. 2 squared is 4. Minus 2 squared is also 4. This way you get rid of those negatives. And then the last step is to divide by the expected. So 4 divided by 30, and you would require a calculator for this, gives you 0.13. 4 divided by 30 gives you 0.13. Once you have this value for purple and white, you're going to add them together, and now you get your chi-square value. Our chi-square value for this practice problem is 0.26. At this time, we're going to check our table. Now, one thing that I should point out, you're going to have different degrees of freedom, and that's a statistical term. The degrees of freedom equals categories minus 1. So here we have two categories, purple and white, minus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1. So the degrees of freedom is going to be 1. Now our hypothesis that the parent is big P, little p is supported if the chi value is equal or less than the value at the 0 0.05 uh, column on the chi-square table. Basically, we're saying that there's less than a 5% chance that our results are due to chance at, or some other factor. So if we look at our table, and this, you don't have to memorize the table, but you do have to memorize how to set this, um, set this problem up. So here we have our table. 
And if we look at point zero 0.05 here, the now degrees of freedom is 1. Remember, categories minus 1 is degrees of freedom. 1, 2 minus 1 is 1. Here we have 3.84. 3.84 is greater than 0.26. So our results are considered value. Remember, it has to be equal or less than this number under the 0 0.05 column. So the parents were big P, little p, little p, little p. This ends part two of genetics AP biology.